Sky Squad, we are back in the building. It's your boy DJ Richie Sky, and we got to talk about everything that's going on in the world of talk right now. So, you know, the talk show space is an interesting space right now because we have a lot of transition happening. You know, first we have the Wendy Williams show ending, we have Sherry Shepard getting her new show, and then we have Jennifer Hudson also getting her own new show. So, with all that happening, that's a lot to take in and digest in the first place. But now we got even more news and it's not looking too hot for Nick Cannon, Garcelle and Lonnie Love. Let's get into what's happening right now with these individuals and their respective shows. OK, now, first things first, we got to start things off with Nick Cannon. OK, so I saw this last night on the Neighborhood Talk. I think it was last night on the Neighborhood Talk. And the news has been making the rounds that says Nick Cannon's talk show is reportedly canceled after just six months on the air. Now, to give you guys a little bit of an explanation of what the neighborhood talk provides via Celebrity 411, they say that, you know, his show was supposed to be replacing Wendy Williams' show if her health meant it had to come off the air permanently. But apparently that all stalled because his show was just picking up 400,000 viewers, which was making it the lowest rated talk show at the time. And that's, again, according to Celebrity 411. Wendy's show averages 600,000 viewers at this point, right? So to take things even further, we head over to therap.com, okay? So they say Nick Cannon's nationally syndicated show is ending just six months after it premiered last fall, okay? This is what they are alleging. Production staff had been told that they'd be going on a five-week hiatus in the upcoming days to give Nick some time to focus on his other hosting duties at Fox's The Mass Singer and on VH1's Wild and Out. So it's important to note that Nick Cannon has a lot of things in the pipeline, a lot of things going on. So, you know, he's not going to be hurting for anything when this show ends. Now, this is what someone with, you know, inside information told the rap. But instead of that happening, a meeting was scheduled for Thursday to notify staffers that production was shut down at the end of that day. OK, so in a statement, Mort Marcus and Ira Bernstein, who are the co-presidents of Debmar Mercury, which also produces and distributes the Nick Cannon show, called the decision to end the program difficult. They said it's never easy to cancel a production with clear potential. But after a great deal of deliberation and examining various options, we have made the difficult business decision to end production on Nick Cannon. Now, here is what the plan is, allegedly, to take two episodes today. These episodes combined with episodes that had already been taped are allegedly supposed to air until the season ends in May. OK, now what Marcus and Bernstein said was we plan to offer viewers original episodes of the daytime talk show through the remainder of the season. Our thanks go to the very talented Nick Cannon and our wonderful production team. And we wish Nick continued success with his many hit ventures. And it's important to note that they did say hit ventures. OK, you got to you got to add that up in there to let the people know that he still has things going on. OK, so there's that. Additionally, um, you know, for me, I think that Nick Cannon personally should have had a nighttime show. Just in my opinion, I feel like he would have done better at night. Daytime, I feel like, is for a different type of personality, but I don't know. That's just me, okay? That's just my thought about the situation. You know, I, ju I just think it's a certain type of personality that you that you put on a daytime talk show, and I just don't know if 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 
his show was suited for that. He gives me more nighttime, Arsenio Hall type of, you know, vibes. You know what I'm saying? But it's not easy in the talk show space. I got to tell y'all the truth. It's really not easy in the talk show space. So there's that bit of information to start things off. And I'm giving you the information in the order that I saw it. Okay. So then, baby, I woke up this morning. I said, now, what else is going on in my Cynthia Bailey voice? Well, if you head on over, if you head on over to the Jasmine brand, you will also see that the real is alleged to be canceled as well, okay? And this is coming from an exclusive from the Jasmine brand. Again, this is an exclusive from the Jasmine brand that allegedly the real is getting canceled. Insiders have told the Jasmine brand that the show, which has been on for eight seasons, will be ending very soon. Now, this is very interesting news as well because I just didn't anticipate this one, but I guess maybe I should have, okay? And let me tell you why I feel like I should have anticipated this. You know, number one, I feel like here's the thing. Let's just get into it. When Tamar left the show, there was an energy that left along with it. And whether you are a Tamar fan or not, you got to admit that the energy that Tamar brings to anything is irreplaceable, okay? And that is sometimes the magic of a personality like Tamar's is that some people will love her and some people will not. But the interesting thing that I have discovered is is that even when people dislike a person so much, they will continue to watch them for whatever reason, okay? I think it's just human nature at this point. So I think that happened. And then you lost the Maori sister, okay? Now, I don't necessarily know that she had as big of a fan base as, let's say, a Tamar, but nonetheless, abruptly, she was out of there, okay? Then you brought in... Amanda Seals, which lasted not very long, okay? Then you bring in Garcelle. Garcelle has a very pleasant personality, and she has the benefit of wisdom, and she's royalty in terms of the Black community, in terms of her artistry, right? So... I can definitely see there being some draw, especially with people who might be fans of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, then also maybe wanting to tune in as well to see her there. However, I just think that once you have changed hosts so many times over the seasons, it just begins to feel like, what are we doing here, right? And I think that some people have still been turned off from that show since losing Tamar, to be quite honest with you. As evidenced by, just let me look at one of the comments right here. One of the comments that says, by Lonnie, we canceled the show when Tamar left, okay? And then there was a lot of scandal regarding how that happened, okay? Now, interestingly enough, when you put into, I don't know, when you put into thought the ratings of let's say a watch what happens live right you think about the ratings for a show like watch what happens live and for instance let me give you guys a um an example of what i'm talking about right here and we're gonna visit tv deets and i told you guys this is such a great channel uh excuse me uh it's such a great um resource i should say for anyone who is interested in ratings on tv when you look at the ratings for something like a watch what happens live which is obviously probably a cheaper a much cheaper show to uh film given the size of the studio given the half hour length 
given the fact that these are featuring people who are on the network already. So you don't necessarily have to pay them per se for appearances. You know, they people want to be on there to average about 379,000 viewers. I mean, the numbers make, I mean, I guess they kind of make sense, but in the overall picture things, I mean, these ratings aren't that high and it's also a later in the night show, but again, much less to um, operate, I believe, than some others, right? And at the end of the day, you know, should this end for Garcelle, she does have a lot of things also like Nick Cannon in the pipeline. So we need to take only a look at her Instagram to know that number one, you know, she's got the new book coming out, right? Love me as I am, right? So that's coming out on, what, April 12th? Okay, so you guys can get your hands on that. You see her castmates are, you know, pretty much, you know, giving her lots of love for, for this from Kathy Hilton, Sutton Strax, Cherise, Cherise Zampino. And she also has her deal now with NBC Universal, which we learned about a couple of weeks ago. All right. So she's got that first look deal with NBC Universal, which means that anything that she puts out, they have the first right of refusal to, you know, either say, hey, we want to work with this or no, we don't want to work with this. So she's got that going on as well. Not to mention that she has the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills in her back pocket as well with that new season starting very, very soon. And Andy Cohen letting us know that uh, this up. is the oh, best. Well, I guess I shouldn't say anything. Best <laughs> season say premiere. No, my the, friend. I would say it's the best premiere of Beverly Hills. Best first episode of Beverly Hills wow. that I've seen. Best first episode of Beverly Hills that he has ever seen. So she has a lot going on. So it's not all bad news. And again, we have yet to hear a confirmation of this. But again, when I hear something from the Jasmine brand, I know. I already know. We already know. We already know. Okay? We already know. Industry expertise right there. So um, what do you guys think of this? You know, are you sad about the Nick Cannon show ending? Are you sad about the real ending? I honestly think that the real should have brought in a, a personality like a Nene Leaks and kept the show. I think it would have kept the show going. I think people would have been tuned in, locked in, tapped in. And that's just my opinion on it. But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. And I will catch you guys in the next video.